Over the past two years, I've been talking to a lot of local authorities and the theme is quite common across them all. Their admin grants have been cut, austerity has really bitten, but the requirement for high quality services for the most vulnerable people and community are still high. They've still got to process benefit claims quickly and efficiently, and despite cuts in admin grants, they're looking at different ways of providing those services in a seamless way to their community. You have universal credits, they don't know whether or not there's still a role for them to play. Do they recruit? Don't they recruit? Local authorities are now administering a discretionary housing payments and that's causing concern for them because they've got to manage that against the criteria. That balance against the day-to-day -day delivery of their work is causing pressure on their resources. I think we're just about to see the impact of CTS because local authorities have generally adapted the national scheme and when they're adapting the local scheme and the demands on their customer to make payments are going to become increasingly higher, then there are going to be more requirements in terms of a face-to-face, -face, telephone contact by those individuals that the local authority are going to have to spend time with those individuals. We've also got to bear in mind that more and more people are looking at being in debt now for the very first time where they've never had to pay anything because they've been in receipt of full benefit. So there is going to be an impact most definitely in terms of collection, managing collection levels and managing that for local authorities. It's very costly for a local authority to go through a procurement process, not necessarily knowing what the end result is. So our model, where we can provide resources on a long-term or a short-term basis, actually fits well with the local authority's strategic agendas at the moment. We recruit these people, we train them, we invest in them, they are permanent. Those resources are allocated to you as an organisation. They're guaranteed. You know who you're going to get, you build up that rapport, you build up that relationship and you have day-to-day -day contact with them. And authorities do want to know who is processing their work because of security, because of that continuity and that build-up of local knowledge moving forward. Local authorities will be able to meet these challenges, managing their peaks and troughs, if they've got a trusted partner, that they know that those resources are allocated, that they're actually going to deliver for them. We will sign up to KPIs, we'll sign up to, sign up to quality levels and to service standards. We work with them to know what their peaks and troughs are, so there's a requirement when, you're, for example, you're coming towards annual billing, we'll increase that resource capacity for them. But there's not just the fact that we can provide processing support for local authorities, there's other support that we can provide. We can take telephone calls from them, from our specialist contact centre in Coventry, we can manage campaigns for them, so if there's an awareness campaign that needs to happen, so for example with the changes in benefit legislation, the Welfare Reform Act, there's been the changes about bedroom tax and the benefit caps and CTS, that all puts pressure on local authorities with their limited resources. Local authorities are working more and more and more towards a shared service agenda. Um, they are looking at opportunities to work together in terms of delivering the more complex elements of the service. So, for example, we have two local authorities where we're actually providing the back office processing out of our Blackburn Business Centre. So, for example, we have one authority undertaking our other partners' appeals and another authority is undertaking the court appearances and the court work around recovery. So it allows them to share resources, to gain opportunities from each other and share knowledge based on the fact that we can actually guarantee that we will process their high volume transactions. It's not just the impact on collection levels for council tax, it's the impact on other departments within the local authority. If local authorities are not processing benefit claims quickly, not answering inquiries quickly, then the impact is on the housing department, there's an impact on, ho on homelessness, there's an impact possibly on social services because they're not receiving the money that they're entitled to. So we need to bear in mind that this is a holistic view, that we're not just talking about backlogs in housing benefits and failure to collect council tax. It's the impact and the knock-on effects across the rest of the organisation. Even in terms of customer services, when somebody's coming into the council, we need to think about, if, we've not, if they've not processed the benefit claim, what is the impact 
on other areas. So it's really important that the authority has access to flexible resources, to accessible resources that are skilled and trained that can actually hit the ground running to support the organisation through very, very challenging times in the future. Thank you.